Well, praise the Lord. Amen. We have like a feast here today. We are just enjoying ourselves. We had the high honor and privilege to hear from Josh Alexander last night. And this morning we have him in our midst. Brother, I'm so glad you're here. Would it be too much for the four of you to stand up, turn around, so everyone can see you, so we can properly welcome you? Please. Thank the Lord for this opportunity. We are going to have our little children come up and sing for us. And then we have some more singing. And then we have some more for us. The Lord has some more for us. So Lord bless us and help us. All right, children, come up and sing. Quick apology to our online audience. I'm sorry for the delay this morning. It's just when you are feasting and when you are celebrating, sometimes we get carried away with the time.
shining as the sun with no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Grace taught our heart to fear. Yes. yes. There was so much to fear, yet our hearts could not could not see it. And they were numb to it because they saw right. we saw it all around us. We wouldn't, but we did not believe in it. That it was so bad. There was so much happening to our young people, to to even our older people. There are so many things that are happening. They are trying to weaken our yes. us as a whole. I'm so glad that today we have leaders. We have Brother Henry. We have other our young people that are actually standing up, like yes. Yes. Brother Josh Alexander. I'm yes. Yes. We have Sister Alfie Tostiga. We have Brother Peter. We have Sister Jennifer Smith and Brother Brother James. We have yes. people that are beautiful. Yes. Yes. So that I can be someone that you can look up to. That I can be someone that can do something for the church. That I can actually be a support for the young people. That's There's right. So many so many things are going against us right now. We yes. have to, we have to get to it now, or it's going to be too late. Right. Right. Yes. Also, yes. Yes. Now or never. Right. That's right. Yes. yes. You're right. Yes. Yes. It also says how we, we we were a wretch to God. Yes. We were such yes. a horror right. right. We were ugly. We were we were disgusting. True. We, we were in the depth the depths of sin. We were as right. deep, yes. deeper, yes. deeper. Yes. And yet God lifted us up from that and cleaned us off. Yes. Somehow, yes. somehow yes. there was a way for us, even though there was so much horridness in us. And that but we were once blind because we could not see, we could not right. see, right. and right. we could not speak out because we did not believe yet. And right. now we have, as, as I've said, Brother Henry, who was had the, the guts to actually speak out yes. against it. Yes. There's so many people yes. right now that don't have that 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 courage because they don't have, they also don't have people around them that would support them. Okay. Right. Most, a lot of people, a lot of young people and others. Or have people that around them that would just push them down, that would just say, that person's gone insane, that person's crazy, they don't sure. know what they're doing. But right now, we have such thank a, God. just a community that supports us. Yes. I thank God that I can be with you all in a time when you have to Amen. That's right. I would be able to find my calling in this time. Yes. I'm able to get in on, get in right with I, I know that I'm safe, but I I want to get even closer and closer. That's right. To this. Yes. No, when it is time to to go back to go to our actual home, yes. That we would I would be able to be not even feel a difference. That I would be feeling as close as God as That's I, right. God yes. as I ever possibly yes. be. Yes. Please help me through this. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. One four seven. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. In the precious blood of the Lamb Would you be free from your passion and pride There's power in the blood, power in the blood Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side There's wonderful power in the blood There is power, power, wonder-working power In the blood
much whiter than snow. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin saints are lost in His life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Jesus, your King, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily as praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working in the bread. service for Jesus your king. Okay, yeah. And I want to say, I would love to do service for Jesus my king. I just can't, it's so brutal just to think back of when I was in the world. Okay. It's like thinking now, like it feels so wonderful to be here. Right. Yes. Right. 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 yes, please give me work, Lord. Yes. Oh, yes. Lord. Yes. Hey. Yes. 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 I want to do the best I can. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. One eight zero. Let's sing it like we mean it. Yeah. To this world I'm crucified. All its follies I've denied. Christ is mine evermore to be. In my heart he has a place. There he rings my wondrous grace. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. Jesus lives in me. Yes, he lives in me. He's the star, perfect day, drives darkness all away. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. Christ is now my all in all, and he hears me when I call. And by faith is your face I see. I will live for him each day. He will guide me in the way. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. Jesus lives in me. Yes, he lives in me. He's the star of perfect day. Drives the darkness on the way. Yes, he lives in me. With his blood, he purchased me when he died upon the tree. And my body is temple be. There is spirit of the body, and my soul satisfied. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. Jesus lives in me. Yes, he lives in me. The star of perfect day drives the darkness all away. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. Sing, Jesus lives in me. Yes, he lives in me. He's the star of perfect day drives the darkness all away. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. what's really going on.
going on. Yes. Because in the past, as we all know, things were obscured and things were confusing. Okay. People didn't know what was right and what was wrong right. to a certain extent. Of course, everyone knows certain principles, but when you can actually see the system for right. what it is yes. Yes. in this time, yes. Yes. that is amazing. This yes. is a special time that we're living. We're living in a time where yes. everything is starting to come together. Sure. Right. We're starting to see right. things. God yes. is gathering yes. into yes. one. Yes. He's yes. making yes. his people together. And I'm just yes. so thankful that we have these wonderful guests that are made. Yes. 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 For everybody who can hear this message, I'm excited to hear what the preacher has for us. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm thankful that this is my life. Yes. Yes. I have to get back yes. to where I was and that the blood has power for us. Oh, yes. When we were singing yes. that, that just charged me with energy to yes. know. Yes. It's not words on paper. Uh -huh. It's right. a real spirit right. yes. that pierces every being yes. who yes. possesses yes. it. Yes. And that the blood today can make a change. Yes. Oh, that it has yes. made a change. Yes. 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 That the fountain was open when Jesus died. To reach every heart. Yes. I thank for everyone that's here and thank yes. the Lord that we have each other. Yes. 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 Pray for me and I'm going to keep praying for the work of God and may we work together. Yes. Yes. 133. Yes. Thank God. Yes. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was. So I cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me for the dear lamb of god left his glory above to bear it to dark calvary so i cherish the cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown in the old rugged cross stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I see for twas on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me so I cherish the old rugged cross trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true it's shame and reproach gladly bear. Then you call me someday to my home far away.
trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. the depths of my soul. I'm glad this morning that I can be saved, that I can throw my whole heart into something, because in reality, everyone wants to throw their heart into something, and it might as well be the work of God, because God is the greatest, if we didn't know that already. I was so blessed by a scripture. Um, the entire chapter is absolutely beautiful. Romans chapter 6, I was just thinking about my personal experience of salvation. It says, Knowing this, that our old man, who I used to be, who the, the years that I spent in sin is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead, for he that is dead is freed from sin. And I was thinking the devil often comes to me and he says, You used to do this, you used to have a problem with that, you were in this sin, and I say, my old sin is crucified. My, that old man is crucified with him. I am a new creature. I do not have to worry about what the devil comes in his accusations. I know I've made mistakes in my saved life, but I am not that old man. I am thankful that God made a way for that old man to be done away with. I'm thankful we don't have to come here with a, with a lamb and a dove and all this, that, and the other. I'm thankful that the promise had come and that we can be saved and saved indeed. Let's take time to pray. Are there any requests we'd like to make known before we go to prayer? Amen. Yes. Yes, let's pray for the unsaved. Yes, let's pray for, let's pray for our hurting world. There is so much oppression in the people of God. We are the only hope in all reality. Let's pray for this hour of service that the Lord will just have his way. The Lord will bless us. Amen. Oh, yes, sir. Their lives in uh, Palestine. That's yes, right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. souls in Palestine. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes, for the yes. churches today. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Let's go to prayer. Fight against the evil of this world. Yes. Lord, please 
sisters and brothers who need yes. immediate attention and care. Yes. Lord, help us see that you are the ultimate healer. We can come to you any time of the day to heal our, our uh, soul and our body. God bless our pastor this morning. Yes. 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 To us, in Jesus' name. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Yes. So thankful to have this testimony this morning. Yes. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Jesus loosed the chains of sin and set me free i am redeemed i am redeemed jesus loosed the chains of sin and set chains of sin and set me free. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Jesus loosed the chains of sin and set me free. Side by side, 
they will march into the celestial city of Jehovah. And in perfect harmony, they will begin singing a new song. A song composed by God and arranged for His children. As the saved by grace approach the land of their dreams, the host of heaven will step aside. Even the angels will be silent, for they cannot sing this new song. It's a song reserved for those voices who once cried out for their Redeemer, those washed in the blood of the Lamb. Yes, these are the redeemed. chains of sin and set me free. Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Jesus got into my heart, he got into my soul. I used to be all so sad, but now I'm free and glad. Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Sometimes I remember how I used to be living in sin. I tried to act happy and free, but I wasn't within. I fooled a lot of friends of mine. They thought I had some peace of mind, but I never had a thing until I opened up and let Jesus in. Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Jesus got into my heart, he got into my soul. I used to be all so sad, but now I'm free and glad. Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. You're getting just a bit tired of fooling around. You try to laugh your way through life, but you're not gaining ground. Why not turn to God today? Ask Him in your heart to stay. And he won't let me go. Jesus got into my heart. He got into my soul. I used to be all so sad, but now I'm free and glad. Sing, Jesus got a hold of my life. And he won't let me go. I used to be all so sad, but now I'm free and glad. Sing, Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Jesus got a hold of my life. Jesus got a hold of my life. Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go.
That's right. That's right. Amen. I am completely behind you, Brother Henry. I appreciate I that. In any way, I mean, be it stepping aside or so, or getting, getting out of the way, if I'm getting out of the way, if someone else is meant to be there, yes, I'll do that. But if I'm meant to be somewhere, I am not going to get right. out of the way. Just because someone um, says, hey, you shouldn't be with that person. That person's kind of, uh, I don't know who that person is. Okay. If, if someone says that, I am not going to step aside. I am not going to get anywhere farther from my apostles. I am not going to get anywhere where, where farther from my God. My God, I have such a, a support in here. I, I yes. want to be Amen. Yes, what Lord. I Amen. need to be. Amen. Please help me all that I would be strong in this time. That I would not forget all the what there is now for Amen. us That's on, right. outside of the world. There is nothing that you can find that is that is worthy to trade for our God. That's Amen. right. Amen. That's right. Amen. It's uh, really been encouraging to be um, in, the, in the house of the Lord with so many uh, people filled with joy, um, genuine joy, um, and, uh, and a love for the, the gospel and Christ. So um, today I actually I have the, the, the honor to be able to be in this church. Um, I, I've seen this for years on the news, and uh, I thought it's, it's uh, really powerful what the entire church did and Mr. Hildebrandt, and uh, so I am... Tr truly honored to be here and to be able to speak here. Um, and uh, today actually is a special service. Um, it started in 2021. Uh, bill C-4 passed, and that was the bill that uh, banned uh, con conversion therapy and all that, and essentially banned some of the scriptures. And uh, as we've seen today, if we truly believe what we sing and what we uh, um, have proclaimed this morning, uh, we cannot deny any of the scriptures. We have to preach it in full. When uh, when I stand before a court, or when I'm sure you guys have had to do that many times, we swear to tell the, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And uh, we're going to tell the whole truth. We're going to go into the scriptures. I don't care how offensive it is. We're going to tell the gospel, and we're going to go into a lost and dying world and tell those who are hurting the most that it is wrong to sin against a holy God, no matter how controversial that is to do. So... I am honored to be here, and I'm very happy that this church has continued to take part in this. It's happening all across the, the world right now. Churches are coming together and uh, preaching what is now unlawful in Canada, and I think that's very important, and it's powerful. So um, I'm greatly honored to introduce Henry Hildebrandt. Greet you all in the name of the Lord this morning. We are counting it a high, high privilege to be here uh, before our God. It is an honor. It is an honor to stand for the truth. It's an honor to stand for the truth. I thank God for that. And it is an honor to preach the word of God. It's an honor to preach the unadulterated word of God preach it like it is and the only way the preached word will accomplish anything if it is preached in the Holy Ghost if it is preached with anointing and this morning we are privileged to be here I greet our online audience so glad that you are with us again this morning you've been faithful through the past months years some of you already 
God bless you. Thank you for your prayers. So we are endeavoring this morning to preach on biblical sexuality. And uh, I am thankful for my hero, uh, Brother Josh Alexander, who just spoke. Uh, I am, uh, sometimes people have, or usually I hear people have heroes that are older than them. Well, I do some things different than everybody else, and this is one of them. I have young heroes, so I look up to the older and I look up to the younger. So uh, this morning, that is our privilege to have you here. So we will do a little bit of preaching here, and then we will sit down, but not until then. Lord, help us. All right. Um, it actually does not matter. Uh, it cannot matter to us uh, what uh, a government of a country says when it comes to the preaching of the word. So unfortunately, unfortunately, a number of churches, uh, so-called, uh, a number of churches in the past years were more concerned about Romans 13 than they were about Acts chapter 5 or Acts chapter 4. Uh, the Bible does not permit us, the Bible does not permit us to hold any person or any government or any prime minister or, or any president higher than God. Long before, long before there was a president, long before there was a prime minister, there was God. There was God. Uh, he spoke, he said things, and he set things the way they should be. And if we want to at all be a church or be, a, be God's community, folks, I got news for you. We got to do it God's way. We got to do it God's way because any other way will not work. 6,000 years ago, and that's where the first problem lies with many people, that they can't count anymore. Yeah. Folks, it's not millions and billions of years. I don't care which scientist you spoke to. There's no rock on this planet that you can show a scientist and he will say it was billions of years old. To show you how it can go with them sometime, some scientists claim that he really could tell how old it was. So one man took an old car battery and beat it up badly. All the lad that's in there beat it up really badly and put it in the soil and back and forth so it finally looked like a meteorite or something. So it looked like something. He took it to the scientist and the scientist tested it and he said, this particular rock is about six billion years old. And the man said, I'm sorry to disappoint you. He said, it's my old car battery. I just beat it up until it looked like this. That might sound funny to us, might sound to us like it's not very deep, but that's about the profoundness of many scientists. That's about how far it goes. Brethren, before uh, any scientist, I believe the word of God. Before any doctor, I believe the word of God. 6,000 years ago, these words were uttered. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Genesis 1, 27. I do not understand. I do not comprehend what the difficulty is. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. What's so difficult? That's actually all that would need to be said about the biblical sexuality. Is we would read Genesis 1.27 and we would say that concludes it. There's actually nothing else that needs to be said. But since we came a long ways, especially all the way from Ottawa, and since we came and dared the weather and came here, brethren, we will say a little more. But I'm saying, biblically speaking, 
Biblically speaking, that takes care of it. That just takes care of it. And God, when God created Genesis 1, in Genesis 1, when he did the creation of everything, it seems like every time he did something, he said, it was good. And then on the sixth day, when he created man in his own image, he said, it is very good. I don't know if it shows there. I don't think it shows there. In your Bibles, you'll see, in the King James Bible, you'll see that the words, it was, are in italics. I don't even mind that. So it would read like this. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, very good. Right? Brethren, my question to this whole wide world this morning, my question to every preacher, because make no mistake, folks, by now we have the preachers lining up left and right, falling for the exact same thing as what the world is falling for. As a matter of fact, I'll say this morning that it is the preacher's fault why the world is in this state that it's in. If the preachers would stand up, and be what they need to be, and preach like they should be preaching, this world would not be in the shape that it is. I'll, go a little, I'll come a little closer. If in the past few years, the preachers had stood up, the prime ministers would have backed down. But unfortunately, the prime minister and the premiers guessed it right. They said, we assume that the churches are sleeping. We assume they are sleeping. And on that assumption, they went ahead and did what, did what they did. Well, thank God, not all of us were sleeping. Amen. Not all of us were sleeping. And this morning, here we are, and we are well aware how the enemy is working. And the reason the governments are in the shape that they are in is not, it didn't start with the government. It started with the lack of faith and the lack of preaching and pe people falling asleep. Brethren, we do not understand why that is, but let's not waste our time and thinking why did he or she not do what she or he, he or she needed to do. Let us be what we need to be in this time. We were born for a time such as this. And if you don't see it, I do. I think you do, and I do. Brethren, we were born for this hour, this day, this time. And brethren, let me warn you ahead of time. If you will live godly, you will suffer persecution. It is an impossibility, as the brother was speaking last night. It is an impossibility for us to be the church and not be persecuted. It's a guarantee that if we are the church, we will be persecuted. You know why? Because we'll run against what is happening. We're, we're, going, we're going against the stream, folks. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that it would be this? 6,000 years ago, like I said, these words were uttered. Then, 4,000 years after that, these words were uttered. Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Maybe that should be our wedding messages. Maybe that's what we should be talking about and letting people know the ABCs again. Who would have thought that we would come to this? Then, 2,000 years after that, no one questioned what was uttered back then, 6,000 years ago, and 4,000 years ago, 2,000 years after that. No one questioned that God created male and female until recently. Until, I say until very recently. And brethren, let me say this. Let me tell the whole world. We are standing on a foundation on an old tried stone and don't mistake don't make a mistake we aren't anywhere near nowhere near thinking that this tried stone can now be cast aside and that we will now all of a sudden be confused about gender not even close If my faith is not worth dying for, it's not worth living for. Young man, young woman, 
If you have a faith, if your present experience is not worth dying for, throw it away. Throw it away. Because it doesn't do anything for you. We've got to have an experience, a faith that is worth dying for. Brethren, if it wasn't for a certain protection that we still have, and I'll say to the credit of our government, I thank God that we can still say this here, if not legal, then illegal. But I thank God that we are still here where we are. But brethren, this is why people were burnt at the stake. Brethren, I would be, I would be, I would be nailed to a cross downtown Elmer. I would be burnt at the stake if it wasn't for certain protections we still have. And God knows how long we have that. Brethren, we are standing on a solid, solid foundation. What you see in our time right now is a direct fulfillment of the prophecy in Revelation chapter 20. After a long period of time, it says Satan will be loosed for a little season. And brethren, we are in that season. We are right now living in a season where the devil is temporarily, thank God, not indefinitely. The devil is loosed a little season. And I've got some sad news to tell you. Many Christian folks are not nearly as awake as the devil is to the reality of it. The devil knows right now he has very little time. You feel that. You notice that, right? You notice that. The devil knows he has very little time. But I am so sad to tell you this morning that by far the majority of Protestantism, by far the majority of people that call themselves Christians, are snoring away while the devil knows I have but little time. And if we sleep in this important time, I'm not mad, I'm just passionate. If you sleep during this important time, you will fall for things like you see people falling around. And brethren, I got news for you. It's a bottomless pit. It won't stop where it is today. You see it's sinking and sinking and sinking. It's not just that they are confused about male and female. Now, now they're becoming cats. Now they're becoming dogs. So I don't know what to do. If they come on my yard, what do I tell my dog? Not to get the cat? I'm just saying, where is this going? How far is this going? Brother, it's, it's actually laughable, but on the other hand, it's extremely sad. I'll say right on the onset of this message this morning, I invite every homosexual, I invite every gay couple to come and attend our services. You are welcome to come. Because the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. It doesn't matter which sin it is. Every single sin. And if we as the people of God cannot offer salvation to these people. Who is? Who is? There is no help in politics. There is no help. Listen, they're after the votes. They're after the money. They're after this, after that. Who knows? Who knows what they're after? But brethren, we must save these souls. Because they're trapped. They're oppressed this morning. I wouldn't mind, I'm saying this wholeheartedly, I wouldn't mind to preach to thousands of people that are all stuck in that lifestyle. And I would tell them up front, I do not hate you. I hate, I hate the devil that, has, that is oppressing you, that has this holding you and bringing you into this lifestyle. But brethren, we've got to bring the gospel, which means the good news. We've got to bring it to them and let them know there is power in the blood. You too can be saved. You can be saved. If God saved you, he can save them. And brethren, we're not looking down our nose and saying, well, at least I never did that sin. A sin is a sin. And sin will keep you out of heaven. So brethren, I am not in the business this morning to stand here for the next hour and slash those people and cut them down and tell them that there's no hope for them. There is hope. But I am in the business this morning of cutting and slashing the devil's plans. Would you like to know what is worse than the sexual perversion we see around us? And that is that it's condoned and propagated. 
Brethren, it should never, never be the case. I do not understand, and neither do you, I believe. I do not understand why as soon as someone takes a stand, as soon as any resistance towards that spirit is met with vicious force. Case in point, Josh Alexander. Brother, I told my wife last night, brother, don't, don't worry, nothing will happen to you. I told my wife last night, I said, that man needs recognition. I mean, serious recognition. Why don't you stand up? That young man needs serious recognition. Where in the world? Brother, brother, that, that, that's fine. I, I won't, I won't, if, 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 I, if I preach your funeral, I may, may as well tell you now while you, while you can enjoy it. I, I'm telling you, where are, where are they, Sister Much? Where are the 17-year-olds? Where are the people that will stand up? What did this young man stand up? What did he want? Oh, well, he wanted to be seen. No, no, come on. Come on. We constantly get that thrown at us, don't we? Yeah, you just want to be somebody. You just want to be somebody. Well, maybe I want to be somebody. I want to be somebody that will stand up for what our Creator has created. All this young man did is say, look, folks, that's not right. That's not right. And brethren, where are the people? You may be seated. Where are the people? God help us. God help us. The greatest attack on womanhood is to allow a man to call himself a woman. Woman, sisters, woman worldwide, you should be enraged. You should be facing the man like a lioness. I tell you what, I grew up on a farm involuntarily. I grew up on a farm. And I'll tell you something. I was more afraid of the cows when they were mad than the bull. My brother and I usually disagree on everything, but now we're agreeing. I'll tell you, when that cow was mad... And you know why she got so mad? Because when her little one was touched. As, as, as strong as the bulls stood there. As, as high nose as they walk around. But when she came around, he went like, oh, oh my, where you want me to go? I'm saying our woman in this time. I'm saying the woman in this world. Brother, they should be rising up. I'd, I'd love to see a bunch of women chase those men out of there and say, get thee behind me, Satan. I mean, sorry, that's what Jesus said. I'm just saying, get thee behind me. Get out of here. Right, right, right. And if he can't find the bathroom, let's get somebody to show you where that is. That's where you belong. But preacher, it sounds like hatred to me. I don't know what you call it. I just know one thing. I feel like Jesus did when he walked in the temple and he kicked over those tables. That's how I feel. CTV told me a long time ago, Pastor, it doesn't seem very godly. I said, I know. But I said, it didn't seem very godly when Jesus kicked over the tables either. But I said, it felt more godly afterwards. Listen, brethren, we've got to stand or we don't. We got to be the church or we are not the church. What are we? I'm sick and tired of playing church. I'm not here to play church. We used to do that as little siblings. We play church, but not anymore. We're, it's real. We're in a battle. This young man's life is at stake. This young man is being persecuted. He's got an axe. He's marked. When they arrested his brother and took him away September 22nd, I'll tell you what. I forgot all about how old I was. I saw those young men running after Nick. I ran after Nick as fast as I could. I looked nice. Th- I'm standing. People looking. What's, the, what's that man's problem? He's a little white beard. What's he running after? Listen, if the old man don't know how to run, if the old man don't know how to preach, I'll follow a young man. If Saul, if Saul and his army are all trembling there for 40 days, 40 days, oh my, this big Philistine, this big Philistine. I'll tell you what, if I could speak to my parents right now, I'd tell them, could you give me a middle name? Call me David. Because it just boils in me. 
it just boils in me is, will anybody say something? I didn't know Josh's parents. I didn't know who, who he was. I just knew what that man is standing for is God, it's God's will. That is what a young man should be doing. And many more. And many more. And if people don't know how to preach, and if preachers can't get their guts to do something for them, give the Bible to the young man up here. Let them get behind the pulpit, and young man, bring it to us unpolished. Don't worry about it. I don't need to hear it out of the cemetery. I mean the seminary. I don't need to hear it from there. Give it to me straight. Tell me what is the truth. We are done. We are done with this watered down religion and nobody dares doing anything. We're done with it. Come on. I mean, this is kindergarten stuff. I don't know how to be nice this morning. I don't know how to be polite this morning. I had no idea. I said, Lord, just, I prayed this morning. I said, Lord, use this mouth to speak as you would want it to speak. But it's just we're out of time. We're, sister, aren't we are just out of time? We're out of time. And brethren, I feel like I'm on my way out. And brethren, oh, I was so encouraged last night to see young men. Next generation will take it. Take it, folks. Take it as we run. Take the torch. Run with it. Don't worry about it. Don't allow this, this people sitting next to you. What's that called? Peer pressure. peer pressure. Reject it. Reject it. Reject it. Don't worry about peer pressure. You be the peer. You be what you need to be. Rise up. And brethren, yes, as the brother said last night, I'll be as respectful as I can if the prime minister walked in here right now. Sir, yes. Amen, honorable, uh, whatever, whatever I can say, whatever, I'll, I'll quickly ask some other people, help me what words to use, whatever I should be using. But in the end, I'll have to say, yeah. repent and be saved. Yeah. Repent and be saved. Because he's dragging our country down to hell. He's telling, he's, listen, we have it upside down. Our country is upside down. Brethren, we have the leaders of this country promoting, propagating, encouraging, doing this stuff. Brethren, I realize our housing industry is urgent, but there is something more important than the housing industry, and that's what's inside the house. Yeah. What is going on inside the house? What's happening? Yeah. Our women have a dignified place, a dignified place. And oh, brethren, brethren, we must protect our women, we must protect our sisters. We must let the whole world know these people have a dignified place. We, we are protecting them. It's all this young man wanted us protect, protect these people. And brethren, I'm telling you, and we need to have court about that. And we need to discuss that. We need to go over that to see what was done wrong. Brethren, I wonder which court Jesus would have uh, ended up. The way he spoke and what he said. Brethren. God help us. It's time for us. It's time. Lord help us. So a professor, a professor by the name of Alan Walker, who taught at the university in Virginia, suggested changing the name of a pedophile to minor attracted person, MAP, because he said it was so stigmatizing. Stigma, is that the word? Stigmatizing to the person who is a pedophile. I have a question. Professor Walker, do you sympathize with pedophilia? I'm just, I'm just asking for a friend. So, like, do you, do you sympathize with pedophilia? Or what moved you to say it should be, what's it called, MAP, minor attracted person? Brethren, I'll tell you what that is. Making a path, making a path, preparing a path for the pedophiles. What they're doing is just making room for the pedophiles. 
and brethren, we are the countries that have, should have the name in this whole wide world that when it comes to children, that's what somebody asked me recently, Pastor Hildebrandt, I thought that Canada was on the top of the list protecting children. I said, yes, that's what it used to be or sounded like what it was. But I said, we are now basically leading the world the other way, not caring about our children, still all under the, this, the guise of who knows what. Brethren, we, that's, why, that's why on September 20th, as we're speaking, brethren, I usually try when we're in, in, in rallies like that, I try to connect. And that's why they hold something, something there because they don't want you to connect. Brethren, I like to connect with somebody. And I was trying to connect with this man, looking him in the face and telling him, looking at him in, in his face. And all of a sudden I realized that's our government official. That's the leader of the, uh, of the NDP is standing there. And brethren, it just slipped out of my mouth. I said, what are you doing there? You should be here. Brethren, since when do we need to go there and tell the government officials, you need to stand up with us. Brethren, we have presently wickedness in high places. We have wickedness in high places. Here, America, Europe, we have wickedness in high places. Brethren, if I could have been this last week, I'll tell you where I would have been. With the farmers in Germany. Right at the Brandenburg tour. Oh, that's where I would have wanted to be. Brethren, I want to be when they do it in Holland. Oh, so you just want protest. I will protest anything that blasphemes God. Anything that goes against God, that's where I want to be. Brethren, we are not going to die laying down. Brethren, we're going to die. And I am not talking physical violence whatsoever. I'm the most nonviolent person there is. No one is afraid of me that way. And yet they are horrified when I come around because they know what's in me. Because Jesus Christ lives in me. God lives in me. And they know, they know when they look at me, they look at it and they say, Ah, that's, he's not in our favor. He's not in our favor. Brethren, we have a job on hand. We have a job on hand. And brethren, if we are sleeping and snoring away through this difficult time, through this important time, brethren, oh yeah, we have nothing to do. Church is going fine. It's all good. Church is growing. No, man. No, brethren. Church is not growing. Right now, brethren, we need a revival. And God has started to revive. And I thank God it started in me. I thank God that God is bringing his people, waking up his people, and he's letting us know this is what we must do. Young folks, don't worry about, don't worry about what your future will all be. Young sisters, worry about where will we take this battle because we, it's, it's a hot battle. It's a hot battle, brethren. I have no idea how much I have left to preach. I have no, I'll take every opportunity I have right now as if it's my last. Brethren, because we are in a battle. God help us. Jesus actually would have called, if Jesus had talked to Professor Walker, Jesus would have not said that it is minor attractive person. Jesus would have called it millstone attractive person. That's a, that's a little nasty to say until I tell you that's in the Bible. Luke chapter 17, verse 2. Luke 17, verse 2. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. So how will that hold up in court? I have no idea. And I don't really worry about that because all I want to know is at the final court, at the final day of judgment, where will I stand? How will my preaching hold up? How will I do? When God will call us all preachers, let me speak to for a moment to those that have the opportunity or that have the calling to be a preacher. And by the way, you've got to be called of God before you can preach. So let me talk to you for a moment. Where will we stand before the court? Well, pastor, you have to stand in the country where I live and never mind the country that you're living in. Let me tell you something. You and I will stand before God and God will ask us, what did you do when all these things were coming up? What did you do when these things? Brethren, anymore, our children are basically looking us in the eye and saying, so is anybody going to say something? It should not be, it should not be that 17-year-olds, 16-year-olds, it should not be. I was so ashamed when I heard that. I was so ashamed. I mean, a 16-year-old in a Catholic school has to say that? I said, 
the least I can do is stand with him. The least I can do is stand with him and say, God bless you. We got your back. We got your back. And I'll tell all those old preachers that what they need to do is what you did. I'm not, I'm not mad at you. I'm encouraged about what you're doing. Right? Come on. Come on. What is so difficult about saying God created them? Male and female. Male and female. Pastor, you don't understand how many genders there are. Right. I don't understand because there's only two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Male, female. Male, female. Male, female. Male, female. Got it memorized? Folks, we're putting ourselves to humongous shame. That little kindergartens look on when they say, our preacher can count. He doesn't know one, two. He can't do it. The little children will have to teach us and stand up and say, this is what the Bible teaches. Oh, Lord, help us. Oh, Lord, help us in this time. Sodom and Gomorrah did not escape the judgments of God. Please listen. And neither will the Western world. Of Sodom and Gomorrah, it is said, the cry of it, which has come unto me. And brethren, I believe that the cry of what is happening right now in the Western world has come before the Lord. So brethren, so brethren, be not, be not, um, uh, confused or what's another word be not uh, surprised be not surprised saints be not surprised when you will see countries taking over these countries and despite us praying and singing and whatever it is be not surprised if God will give them into the hand of the enemy in my view that is happening that is happening slowly but surely and not even so slow brethren there's nothing the Western world can do to rehearse the past and say, God, you were with us. Look at our dollar bill. We put it right on there. and God, we trust. And what are you doing now? Right. And what are you doing now? Brethren, they are not just, they are not neutral about it. They are, our leaders are actively fighting, actively fighting against what the prophets of God are saying, against what the Bible is saying. That's where the fierce battle lies, brethren. That's where the fierce battle lies. God help us. So, brethren, I need to, I need to, I, I've got a whole list of, uh, of uh, statistics here that you can gladly get a, couple, a copy of afterwards. But, brethren, there's a serious, serious situation. The homosexual agenda includes desanitizing the public. Brethren, we're supposed to get used to it. We're supposed to get used to it. Two men walking around holding hands, we're supposed to get used to it. Well, I never will. I never will. And you should never get used to it. It's wrong. It's wrong. Unless it's father and son. They don't want to do that. Brethren, part of the homosexual agenda is to turn people from Christianity. I'll, tell, I'll read to you or I'll, I'll, I'll relate to you what should be a given, should be a given that any sexual activity should be between male and female. And it should be within the bounds of marriage. Right? I was, brother, I was impressed. I was impressed with your boldness. I don't know where we were. We've been speaking different, at different times at the same, on the same platform. But I don't know where, where it was. But I was impressed when the brother mentioned there loud and clear that sexual activity is confined <clears throat> within marriage, has to be within marriage. Brethren, preachers don't know that anymore. Yes, yes they do. Yes, they do know it. The preachers know a lot more than they let on. They, they know a lot more. But a lot of them have been bought. A lot of them have sold their soul for who knows what. 
uh, and even, even during the past couple of years, there was a nice list that you could look up and see how much money the churches were getting from the government uh, so that they would stay quiet. I'm glad that you can look at that list over and over and you won't find our name in there because we can't be bought, we can't be sold. Brethren, we must stand for the truth at any cost. One study, one study reports that 70%, 70 percent, 70 percent of homosexuals admitting having sexual activity only one time with half of their partners. One study reports that the average homosexual has between 20 and 100 partners per year. Seventy-three percent of psychiatrists say homosexuals are less happy than the average person. And of those psychiatrists, 70 percent say that the unhappiness is not due to social stigmatis stigmatization. stigmatization. Is that the word? Stigmatization? Fifty percent, fifty percent of suicides can be attributed to homosexuals. Captain Will William Riddle of the Los Angeles police says, 30,000 sexually abused children in Los Angeles were victims of homosexuals. Many homosexuals will admit that they are pedophiles. Why do we have this sexual perversion? What is perversion? The alteration of something from its original course, meaning or state to a distortion or corruption of what was first intended. This morning, we are calling out any and all sexual oppressors. Stop abusing the children. More documents are coming out. More things are coming out of past presidents. What's going on? What they're, which island they're going to? What is happening over there? And I would dare tell you this morning that that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Brethren, we have, sound, we have seen the film, The Sound of Freedom. Brethren, our children, our very own children are at stake. And we must call it out for what it is. Brethren, this is nothing less than sexual perversion. It will take, it will take a judgment day to reconcile and judge pedophilia. Brethren, there is so much, so much of that going on. The Bible, I could go to scriptures in the Old Testament, would tell you what the, what the, what the, uh, the punishment was for doing that. We could go to Romans chapter 1 and see what it's saying, how they are going against what should be, what should be the case. Brethren, in our time that we're living in right now, it is prevalent and it is rapidly, rapidly being advertised. Brethren, you know, you know what concerns me very much is the atmosphere. The atmosphere of what's around us affects us. The atmosphere affects us. And brethren, we will have, young man, we need to encourage you. We need to encourage you. Be man. Be man. Be masculine. Grow some muscle and grow a beard once you can. And just be what you need to be. But be a man. Sisters, be women. And if you see the man, tell them, Brother Henry said, grow up. Be man. We want our man to be man. I like Sunday shoes. But if you're struggling with femininity or what's infeminate, or if you're struggling with not knowing, maybe you can borrow his cowboy boots for a Sunday and see if you can grow up. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. I mean, you taught us, you taught us a lot in the past years. And we want to know what does it take for our young men to be man. And if it was the cowboy boot, I'll run after them and put one on in each of, of them. But brethren, what we need is the spirit. 
What we need is a spirit that will resist what is happening around us. Brethren, we are people of the Bible. We know what the Bible says. And we will stand on what the Bible says. Regardless of the consequences. If not, who are we? Young man, walk like man. Walk like man. Talk like man. If you have a high-pitched voice, make a recording first thing in the morning when you get up, when it's rough. So at least you sound like a man. Or what would it take? Or what would it take? And young men, when you come in the parking lot, we're just being, just being direct because we want them to grow up right. So if you come in the parking lot and you see a sister carrying a, a, a car seat and a purse and this and the little one, young man, man, jump up. Walk over there and say, ma'am, let me, let me help you. Let me help you. But pastor, you don't understand. Women these days, they don't want, well, maybe they have, aren't women like they should be. A real woman will still appreciate you opening the door or being. Brethren, I think we need a whole hour of learning and being instructed on what it needs to be a man. But pastor, you, you don't understand. I'm only five foot eight. That's two of us. That's me too. It, you don't have to be tall in order to be a man. We can be short and be real men. And show the tall men how to be real men. Brethren, the gender confusion is serious. It is detrimental for our, our time that we're living in. And brethren, it's time that we rise up. It's time that we show the world by our walk who we are. When they see you walk somewhere, you should, they should be able to tell that's a man walking. Somebody said, Pastor, when you walk somewhere, I always noticed you're pointing your finger. And I said, well, I didn't notice. I didn't notice it. But we're ready to say, thus saith the Lord. Amen. Any moment, church or out of church, we're ready to say, hey, you belong over there. Don't come near here. Well, who do you think you are? I'm a man. I'm a man. And I'm protecting the woman. Yes. Brethren, you say, well, I think the case has gone too far. It's gone too far because we've been quiet. Right. The world is in the shape that it's in, not because of the evil men, because of the good men being quiet. And Brother James, we've got to stand up and say, I will no longer be quiet. I will be what it takes. Well, Brother, you sound dangerous. I am dangerous, except I'm not, I'm, I'm, I have no weapons, except I've never hit anybody. But I am dangerous because God lives in me. Right? Lord, help us, brethren. Lord, help us in this special time that we're living in. And actually, actually, a good woman highly admires and appreciates good men. A good woman is not offended by a man taking his stand. I'll go one step further. In order for our women to be able to be in their place, they need the man to be in their place. And then the man will provide that place. I'm saying a beautiful place for her to fulfill her complete purpose in life. That's what a good man will do. And we need those. We have them in our midst. But I'm preaching like we don't have them. But we have them. And we want more of them. Amen. Young man, we want you to be leaders in that. Don't just, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'll try. No, you lead the way. Sisters, stand up. Lead the way. Be what you need to be. God help us. And now in closing, I would like to use, I would like to read one verse. And this verse I want to read for the whole wide world world no matter what you are oppressed with no matter what you are struggling with Matthew 11 verse 28 Matthew 11 verse 28 well well known scripture come unto me all ye that are labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest if you have a King James Bible, red letter edition Bible, you'll see that this is written in red. This is Jesus speaking. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy, are heavy laden. Jesus often associated himself with people that were socially not acceptable, 
Jesus did that and he changed their life. And this morning I would feel so incomplete or I would feel, I feel like I would, have, I feel like I would have failed. Would I not give an invitation to people worldwide, everywhere, whoever will hear this, even after the words, if people will hear it, come, come unto him. Jesus, it says, come unto me all, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. It doesn't matter. And brethren, let's not, let's not spend this day looking at a certain group of people and say, well, those are, those are the special sinners. You and I, when we were sinners, we were just as lost. Jesus helped those people that the community had given up on, that the community rejected. And brethren, we should be a people. We should be a people that will accept and uh, uh, invite people and come in. When I say accept, I don't mean accept the sin. I'm saying accept the soul because listen to the cry of their souls. Their souls are crying. How can I be delivered from this? And brethren, they are oppressed. The people are victims. We need to see them as victims. They are oppressed by our very leaders. We invite them and tell them, come and be set free. And they can be set free. God will help them because there is power in the blood. But brethren, our foundation stands as clear as day. We are not confused. We are not confused. My wife and I clearly know who we are. She knows. I know. When I hear her speak, I know it's her speaking, not me. Brethren, we are clear. We're not confused. This world pretends to be confused. Brethren, the evil that is going on in the schools, educating the children, telling them about this stuff, brethren, is satanic. It is satanic what they're telling them. And brethren, somebody, somebody, somewhere, somebody has to step in there and say, no way. No way. We cannot do that. And brethren, if nothing else, if nothing else, to everyone that's listening to me, it might be time for you to pull your children out of the public school. It might be time for you to walk up there and say, I am pulling my children out. Well, why? You know why. You know why. And this is why, folks. This is why I said in that video that we did a couple of months back. This is why I boldly said and stand by it today. I said I want to thank the Muslim families that, they, that their children did not take part in the pride day. Amen. Brethren, I am not... I am not a nationalist, or I don't know what you would call it. Brethren, I will not stand up regardless for a people. Brethren, we are standing up for the truth. And if the Muslims, and brethren, they got that right, and they got some other things right. Brethren, they, they see the family value. They see the family structure. And brethren, we have lost it in the Western world. I say, generally speaking, we. Thank God we, not, we haven't. But brethren, we are in a battle, and we must restore now while it can be restored yet, or at least to the degree that, to the degree that it can be. But brethren, judgment day is ahead of us. Where will you stand? God help us. So very thankful for the privilege we have to have you all here. May God help us all. Let's continue to stand. Let's continue to stand. You've been, you've been a real inspiration. You, everybody stand. You, Matt, you've been, you've been a real inspiration to our parents. A real inspiration to our parents. I remember when I met you for the first time. I thought, what was it that you instilled in this young man? What was it? And we want more of that. We want more of that. We must stand in this time. This is our day. God help us. God help us. Sister Bridget, she here. Do you have that? Come. We'll, we'll, we'll close with, with a song this morning. All right. We'll just keep on standing and we'll let them sing. And that, with that song, we will be dismissed. By special request, we are singing the doxology. Anyone who knows it, gladly sing with us.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Serve Him with joy, His praises tell. Come now before Him and rejoice. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son. 